get started. Obviously we've got a bit of a small group tonight, but I think that's my fault. I did schedule this on a holiday. We had over 20 people said they wanted to come, but they couldn't with uh, either they're on vacation or the shortened work week made it a little bit difficult. But that's not going to stop us. Now there's lots of food, so please, please eat up as much as you like. And we're going to start off tonight talking about a USP. Everybody in the room familiar with that term? It's a unique selling proposition. Any of you have a USP you want to share before we get started? If not, that's fine. We'll just move right along. I have, I have one that we use. What is yours, you know, John? I have a disaster company, so I have something right. that says when, when life gets messy, we clean things up. When life gets messy, we clean things up? Not bad. All right, Paul, do you know what a USP is? USP would be a unique selling proposition. Now, sometimes this gets confused with a slogan, but it's definitely not a slogan. Okay, USP is going to answer basically the most important question that you have in your business, which is why should any of your prospects or customers do business with you instead of any other choice that they have? So by answering that question in your USP, you're going to give yourself a pretty distinct advantage over your competition. Because frankly, most business owners, they either can't take the time to do that, they don't understand what it is, or they get it confused with a slogan. Now this question here, that why should I, your prospect, choose to do business with you, that's Dan Kennedy's trademarked USP question. And frankly, you're probably going to find it's one of the most important that you're ever going to face as a business owner. By getting a USP instead of a slogan, not only are you going to get an advantage and differentiate your, you from your, from your competition, but you're going to get some advantage over companies that do slogans. I am not a proponent of slogans. I th there's, they're useless. It's a waste of time. And I'll prove it to you here with a few that I've got. Now, travel should take you places is a slogan from a fairly famous company. Any of you happen to recognize what company that is? That is the Hilton Hotels. Now, as we're going through this list, one thing to keep in mind is all of these slogans, these companies, these are multi-million dollar companies, hired Madison Avenue ad agencies and spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to come up with this. Then what? It sat in front of a board of directors, got approved, and then is rolled out in nationwide commercials. So travel, I agree, it should take you places. I think that's the very definition of travel. Another pretty famous slogan is, we never forget who we're working for. Any of you guys know who that is from? That is Lockheed Martin. And finally, in my example of pretty lousy slogans is, you got people. Anybody recognize that one? That is H&R Block. Now, considering the millions of dollars spent on this small collection of words, do any of these actually answer the USP question we just went over? Travel should take you places? Yes, it should. We never forget who we're working for. Honestly, I hope when I hire somebody, they don't forget that they're working for me. I think these are pretty basic building stuff. Uh, you got people from H&R Block. I honestly find that the most disturbing one of them all. It's uh, grammatically incorrect, and it's very vague, and it comes from a company that their, their whole purpose is accuracy. Yeah. So you got people seems, well, it makes me wonder who are they, and do I need to feed them? Who are these people? So these are not good slogans. Well, they might be a good slogan, but they're certainly not a USP. Kind of like we discussed last month, as small business owners, we need to be very careful about who we emulate. These companies here, with their slogans, are definitely not something that we as business owners want to emulate. We don't want to give vague generalities. We don't want to give the definition of words, travel should take you places. 
none of these are going to get us any customers. So, what is it then that is going to make a good USP? Is there a particular recipe? Does it have to have a certain number of words? Can it be short? Can it be long? There's no real right answer for this. In a second, I'm going to show you all what I consider to be the most famous and effective USP probably of all time. It allowed a uh, startup business to turn into a multi-million dollar empire. And it's only 10 words. Now that doesn't mean your USP has to be short. In Mike and I's business, Direct Results Marketing, our unique selling proposition is about, I think it's like 44 words. And this is it. It says, we teach business owners and entrepreneurs how to stop being advertising victims by using the sometimes frightening power of direct response marketing, which will cut the fat and the waste out of your advertising and make your sales efforts 100% more effective, guaranteed. The USP I was talking about, now this is a much smaller USP, we've got 10 words. Domino's Pizza, fresh hot pizza, delivered in 30 minutes or less, guaranteed. Now, Domino's Pizza was started in 1968. Tom Monahan and his brother James, they bought a little Dominic's pizza place for a uh, $75 down payment and a $500 loan they got. A couple years later, Tom's brother sold him his share in Domino's Pizza for half of a Volkswagen Beetle. So, in 1973, Tom came up with this USP right here, which you got to admit is a very powerful 10 words, and it set Domino's Pizza up on a course for multi-million dollar success. In those little 10 words, it gives three very important things, a promise, a meaningful, specific, and a guarantee. And frankly, it's got a little bit of truth in advertising in it as well that's unspoken. Nowhere does this say anything about the pizza you're ordering tasting any good. Because that's not important. He's not selling the best tasting pizza. He's selling fresh hot pizza delivered in 30 minutes or less. Now, eventually, as we all know, Domino's had to drop the 30-minute or less guarantee because one of their drivers wrecked into a lady. They wound up having to pay out $2.8 million and decided mm, perhaps they wouldn't put that in there any longer. But that doesn't mean that there's not powerful lessons there that we can all learn. Because we can get our own USPs to contain a promise, meaningful, specific, and a guarantee. Think how much further we're going to be over travel takes you places or you got people. And to do this, you don't have to hire a Madison Avenue ad agency. You could just use Domino's as an example and use those three things yourself. Or you can also use the Direct Results Marketing Guide to Creating a Powerful USP, which I have handily printed up for you all. And this is something you can take home. I'm going to cover four different styles of unique selling propositions. I'm going to give you some examples of each ones that you can modify. But you're going to find a lot more detail in here. This is about 10 pages. My slides are only going to be a few more. And I've also got a homework assignment for you all in here for next month as well. So at this point, any questions about USPs and what exactly makes them up? All right. Well, we've got four different ones that should cover the vast majority of businesses. Now, I know we've got a couple service businesses here in the room, seminar company, auto repair shop, and uh, disaster cleanup. So these two might not necessarily apply so much to your business, but you can still use them to spark some creative ideas. If your business or your company is offering a broad selection, an example of a good USP right here, five times the selection, four times the color choice, three times the number of convenient locations, two times the warranty, half the markup of any dealer. Now that lists some pretty good reasons why people should do business with that particular company. Or, as another example, we always have 168 different widgets, no less than 12 different sizes, 10 desirable colors, and price ranges from six to $600. 
both of those examples there, and you'll find more in-depth ones in your guides there, but they show you a lot more than a slogan of simply, we have cheap prices. Or Walmart. Walmart's a big discount store. Their USP is one word. It's now always. That makes no sense either. Which brings us to a discount price USP. Walmart's pretty big on the discount pricing. But again, they're not utilizing this type of thing. If you were owning a realty company and you wanted to talk about price, you could say XYZ Realty charges you a 6% commission, a 7 to 22 grand on a typical purchase. However, we at ABC Realty only charge a modest 494 fee. Another example that you could use as a discount price would be a little bit smaller. The average markup in the widget industry is 39%, ours is 15. Pretty direct and straight to the point. But again, it conveys a reason why people should go to that company to buy their particular widgets versus any other company. Thirdly, we've got a service-oriented USP example. Now this, I know quite a few of you here tonight are in service businesses. So here's one for a regular carpet cleaner that's been used by others in the past. We clean your carpets whenever they need it all year long, plus we scotch guard your carpet and upholstery, all for $179 per year. We're going to go out of business, man. <laughs> It's pretty cheap. <laughs> or whenever it snows, we'll be out in 24 hours to clean your driveway and walk free. It's just an added benefit of placing your homeowner's policy with XYZ Insurance Agency. Again, differentiating themselves from their competition and offering solid reasons why you should go do business with them. Now, the fourth USP is my personal favorite, the Snob Appeal USP. And you'll see a lot of these around. Uh, I've got an example here from a big chain health club. A big chain health clubs have 10,000 members all jostling between 6 and 9 p.m. to use five machines or all trying to squeeze into the sauna or jacuzzi at the same time. At Club Elegance, membership is limited to 565 families. You'll find in your paperwork there that USP goes on to a lot more detail that uh, you could use in... Uh, sales materials, sales letters, <coughs> so on. A different kind of snob appeal USP if you were selling actual products could be something similar to this. Only 1,200 widgets are produced each year, 900 stay in Europe where they come from, 50 go to Japan, 100 South America, only 150 get to the USA. Out of those, 25 make it to Colorado, and we get 18 of them, and we sell them at fair prices to our best customers as long as they last. In your guide, you'll find 20 or 30 other examples that you can use to help modify your existing USP, or if you don't have one, to use as a basis to create one. Now, next month, when you all come back, I'd like you to take the guides that you've got, write your current USP down, and then look the work over and see what you can come up with that might either make it different, make it more powerful, or incorporate one of the three things that the Domino's Pizza USP had, meaning a promise, meaningful, specific, and a guarantee. Now switching back to Mike and I's unique selling proposition, we offer all three of those Plus, it's very wordy. I happen to believe the more you can tell people about your business, the better. You know, direct response marketing, and, and, and a USP is a form of direct response marketing, is all about, it's all about salesmanship, be it in print, or be it on the radio, be it on TV. You don't have to keep it short and sweet. Feel free to let your customers know exactly what it is, no matter how long that it takes. Because if people, they're going to buy from you, they're going to want as much information up front as they can. So like Joe, on yours, some of the, the ad that you showed me earlier, Joe did a marvelous ad earlier. And if he's willing, I'd like you all to take a look at it here before you leave. He did just a really great ad for his company. But he has got, uh, the USP you stated earlier, 
is a little bit short. You could take some of your promises and guarantees straight from the stuff you're currently working on and incorporate that into a unique selling proposition. Then once you have your unique selling proposition, it doesn't necessarily have to remain the same over the course of your business. Mike and I has evolved over the past five years several times as, as our business has evolved, as we've learned more, and as we've offered more to other folks. So when you settle in on one, you don't have to lock it in the stone. You can test it, you can move it, you can talk to your customers and see what they think. That's the ultimate judge. One thing that you don't want to do is worry what your friends think, or no offense, but what your spouse may think, or what your neighbors may think, because the only thing that really is going to matter on this type of thing is what your customers think. Now, my USP, I've told that to people. I, I have friends in traditional advertising, and I tell them that that's our USP. They automatically think of it as a slogan, and they think I'm nuts. Why, why are you saying 45 words and using terms like frightening and things of that nature? But it's memorable, and it gets the point across. Your USPs can all do the same thing. Tim, have you been working on one? Off and on. Off and on. It can be a little bit difficult, but I think, and this, this goes for everybody in there, if you spend a little time just reading over this guidebook here, it's kind of designed to just spark some creative thinking for you. It's not necessarily you want to take and use it exactly, but you'll see other examples in there as well that you can just mold and use and write ideas down and then bring them back next month and we'll all sit down and we'll go over them together and we'll have a little contest and the best one will give away one of Dan's new books that just came out. Or it might actually wind up being Bill Glazer's new book instead, but about the same thing. Anybody have any, any USP-related questions? We all understand the difference between that and a slogan. Joe's business, for example, is multidimensional in that there's mold as an aspect of it. Right. There's Water damage is an aspect, carpet cleaning is an aspect. So, would you recommend that you try and branch out USPs for different segments of this market, of this uh, customer base? I would, actually, because I would imagine, Joe, that you're going to be marketing to those different niches individually. Yeah, that's why we have, we have like four business names. That's why we chose Restoration Colorado, because my wife is sick of answering the phone. So we have fiber clean for car clean, we have a mm -hmm. Mary Drive for water damage, we have mold free now for mold, we have Great American Forest for our flooring company. So, so you've you, got several on oh yes, kind of one like, umbrella. How do I answer the phone? <laughs> so so we came up with Restoration Colorado. We do it all man. Restoration Colorado. Yeah, so basically we're gonna write down what we don't do. That's the shortest list. Now what you don't do can also make a good USB because saying what you don't do also differentiates you from your customers. So I think like we just mentioned earlier before we started, the last thing any business wants to be is everything to everybody. Yeah. You can't please everybody, you can't make them all happy, and what do you want to do? Compete with multi-million dollar corporations like Walmart for business? Not so much, not if we can avoid it. Anything else? Well, that's, that's got me thinking now for a USP, so. Well, that's good. That's, that's what we want. And if, you know, over the course of the next three weeks before the next meeting, if you think of something, give me a call. Uh -huh. We'd be happy to talk or, or, or stop in at any time. You know, Mike and I, we don't make our consulting services really available for free to too many folks, but anybody that's coming to our meetings, we're more than happy to answer questions and sit down with. If, if you've got ads you want to show us, if you've got ads you want to show in front of the group, Typically, you know, we have more people here, so it's going to be a bit more of a, a group interaction than, than we can get tonight. But uh, it's always good to be able to bounce your ideas, not just off of me or Mike, but, but off of Tim and Paul and David as well. Because we, everybody in this room is pretty much going to understand the basics of what we're trying to do. 
which we're trying to get away from useless image branding advertising, which isn't going to work for any of us in the room, and we're trying to focus in on stuff that will actually make a difference. And, you know, one of the things that we want to make sure in these meetings that we do is we want all of you that come here to leave with a real value, with something that you can go home and you can work on it yourself. You don't have to hire me. You don't have to hire Mike. You don't have to get Dan Kennedy at $18,000 a day. You know, you, you can do some of this work on your own. Now, that's not to say that our services aren't readily available to all of you that need it. But there is a basis that you can do these things without having to spend big bucks. Yeah. You know, you and your company, you don't need to hire a Madison Avenue ad agency to create some useless slogan for you that isn't going to mean crap to anybody that hears it. You know, I, I just find that so telling that we look at, you know, we looked at those three slogans. You might have maybe recognized one or two, but even if you recognize it, does that make you want to go do business with the people? Like uh, Holiday Inn, their latest slogan is two words. It's look again which I just think is about the worst I've ever heard in my life. Do you really want people taking another look at your rooms? <laughs> you know, the Holiday Inn is not in the upper echelon of hotels. I think we should just glance at it and not study the, the, lousy, the lousy rooms. So if that's it for questions, my, my talk here tonight on USPs is, is fairly brief because we put a lot of that in there for you and when actually you know when when we we laid these plans out we were expecting about 25 people a little more audience interaction tonight so it might move a little quicker what would you uh how would you differentiate a usp from an offer from an offer yeah. well an off like do you have an example of what where the two well, might say, example, might right, intersect right now, uh, one of the usps if people come to his mold site it's going to say for a limited time, receive. Don't spend a penny. What does it say? Well, it's a hundred twenty-five dollar value, uh, free mold inspection. Free mold inspection. Free mold inspection uh, for. For limited, I don't know. Anyway, it's it's kind of an offer, and it's kind of, in a way, it's kind of a. Uh, it's a little bit of a USP in the sense that, I mean, every, everybody talks about free estimates and look. Right. And everybody will come to your house. Right. But he's wording it in a way where people get the impression There's they're getting something really so you're wording it in a way where it sounds like typically you've got to pay hundred and twenty five dollars to get the service but this time especially for you folks it's free yeah. right well that in and of itself could be a USP for that particular area of your business yeah I've gotten into a lot of houses through that and basically I just I want the mold job now, right. There's a lot that I go to, and there's that much mold, and it's like, okay, you don't got a mold problem. But that's okay, because we, we close, probably if we get 10 calls, I bet six of them have mold, and I, and I close 100%. And anytime mm -hmm. I get into a house, I close the deal, because they're not going to, I have more experience than anybody in El Paso County, and, you know, it, it's just, you know, my personality comes through, and I really mm -hmm. care about them, because my wife got mold poisoning nine years ago, and was, and uh, was hospitalized, so I have a story sure. to tell, and, you know, and people... That are that have it are worried about it, and you know. But mold's not the biggest part of my business, though. It's it's water damage and sewage damage, where it's insurance work is where the money is, because mold's not covered by insurance. Right. So I'm able to compete with people like Service Master that's trying to still charge what they were charging ten years ago when the average was twenty seven thousand dollars for a mold job. So they're still trying to do that. So I blow them out of the water every time. But. Um, um, so the USP then in this case yeah. could be the, an offer. Sure. Somewhere. Yeah. Sure, it can be an offer buried inside of a USP I with, without a problem. Pizza. Yeah, I was just going to say that Domino's is making an offer. They're making a promise, a guarantee, a specific, and there's an offer right there, pizza, at your house in 30 minutes. So it doesn't have to just be about your business. It can be tailored to a particular area of your business. Well, everybody have one of yeah, you should pass these out. This is a great ad. Now, this is centered, of course, around his carpet restoration, or excuse me, his, his overall restoration business. But there's lessons in this ad right here that I, I know everybody in the room can use. And it's the first marketing piece that I've, I've ever done, so that's my first Yeah, okay, so give a hand for Joe with his first marketing piece here. This is but definitely a winner. I did a lot of reading before I tried it, so... And this right here, this is the type of ad, if you took this to some sort of advertising professional, yeah. they'd laugh right at you and think you're nuts. You're, right. you're going to run this? And that's usually a good sign. 
If, you, okay. if you're taking your stuff to the pro, the pros, and they're saying, oh, you can't run that, that's crazy, yeah. then... I understand when I buy something and I see stuff like this, I buy it because it's exciting. And well, I, right. And it's all black and white. It's like, what? I throw it away. So I, I know it works that way. Yeah, and you're right. You can't, you can't rely on what your wife says or your friends because they, they all don't understand it. And they're not, no. they're not getting a mold job from me anyway. They don't care. So they're like, right. They're not the ones that are giving you money. These are real estate agents. You know, there's a story Dan Kennedy likes to tell, and I'm, I'm pretty sure the company is Casey Fine Furniture up in Denver, but I'm not 100% certain. But they're real big in direct response. <clears throat> they send out thousands and thousands of sales letters. They're, they're pieces that look very similar to yours. And the owner's wife is just mortified with the advertising. She's embarrassed. She doesn't like her friends to see it. And so this guy, in order to buy himself a little peace of mind, he actually gets 10,000 full color image branding brochures printed up and he throws out 9,500 of them so he gets a good price yeah. and he gives them to his wife so she can pass them out to her friends yeah. so he doesn't have to hear about it all the time and she feels better but in the meantime all of the money that he's making is coming from his quote unquote ridiculous looking silly yeah. well, advertising you're laying in the hospital is yeah. a great way that, that's a great picture to add in there. I don't know if some of you are familiar with Chauncey Hutter. He's in the tax preparation business. He's semi-famous. He's one of Dan Kennedy's uh, upper echelon platinum members. But he's got a real famous ad piece that's got him uh, with his hair just going all askew. And I, I think he's in a straight jacket. It's just a really wild picture. And this is along the same theme. It's... Uh, you know, something's driving me crazy, so I have to discount my prices in, in this way. But yeah. th th these are these are these are winners. I I'm willing to bet that this ad's going to be a winner for you. And like I mentioned earlier, I'd love to hear next yeah, month I'll or when you have something some know. some results uh, from that. We're gonna we're gonna hand deliver them. So you know, to to like uh, well, realtor offices well, or I know a lot of real estate people already that can get me in the door to hand it out to all the real estate agents because mm -hmm. I want them all to have it. And those are those names that I put on there are pretty big names. People understand those are the biggest sellers in town. Right. So they're using me. In, plus, I'm giving away a $3,000 trip. Look at this for a second, Tim. Sure. Right. No, you've got some great giveaways on here. And, you know, you can't you can't beat it. And a free carpet cleaning. And my wife is looking at all this like, Hill, I want to go to San Francisco. I said, well, honey, we'll go to Paris, man. If I get 100, 100 real estate people, you can right. save it. It doesn't matter. That's, then, like, then, that's another million bucks. Then you're going to definitely right, be making it in. Now, you've, you've got so many good elements on here. Have you all got a copy of this? You, know, you see, he's obviously, he's got headlines. He's got a bit of humor. He's got a bit of personality, which is what Mike is going to be yeah. talking about I'm here about in a few minutes. Because your personality is definitely a way to keep your customers close to you over a long period of time because eventually your services are your services you can yeah. only clean so many carpets you can only fix so many cars you can only give so many seminars yeah. and people are just going to lose interest after a while unless they're interested in you as a person or in the crazy advertising that you do that makes them laugh well, that they, that they love crazy that use me but they know I do great work and they never have a problem the house closes so but but I that is my personality um, I am real high energy and four hours a night sleep and you know I'm up at four in the morning doing this stuff thinking oh my that's, that's good uh, All right. you know but I'm excited about I'm, I'm I love life man and me and George George and I work real well together I mean we feed off each other real well he's he's you know actually it's the first time he ever said he liked anything of mine <laughs> I know, I've never done anything before. I've had right. ideas, but I've never really done anything. And yeah, this is the first bit of marketing for those in the room that don't know that Joe's done. And what did you say? 15 years? 17, 17 years? years in business is the first marketing piece I've ever done. I've never right. done any marketing. It's all been like B and I groups and word of mouth. Mm -hmm. I've never, I've never sent anything out. So you've got. Luckily for you, you've got a good head start above a lot of folks 
who, and, and I mentioned this last month, but what happens a lot in business is everybody, you, you get into whatever particular business that you're in and you're not quite sure what to do, so you look around at everybody else and see what they're doing. Kind of like when you know we were kids, you go to high school, it's a different one, you're not sure what to do yet, so you kind of look around and see what everybody else in the school does and then you yeah. do it too. Well, that happens a lot in advertising where you get people that are making crappy advertising and then all of their competitors are copying their same lousy advertising. Like for instance, I think we've all seen the people on the side of the roads now holding the sign and doing this routine right here with some kind of sign. Yeah, hot wings. Or right. Yeah. Now, in my opinion, that is just about the worst waste of money that these people could be doing. It's not targeted. It's you're hoping that whoever happens to be driving by happens to need whatever it is that you're offering. I mean, the amount of money that you're paying somebody, it's got to be at least minimum wage. What is that now, Seven fifty an hour to have somebody stand outside and wave a sign at you don't even know who's reading it. Big waste of money. You, know, you can take that same amount of money, five, six hundred bucks a month, and invest it in something that actually works and actually brings some profit back in, kind of like what you're doing right here. I'd imagine with one of these jobs, you said what? One mold job is about well, three grand about or something three, like that. Anywhere from three to ten thousand. Um, yeah. So it's you know I have oh. a, a high rate of return, of course. Yeah. So technically, I mean, you print up three thousand dollars worth of these and yeah. you pass them all out and you just get one. Yeah. Well, this ad just paid for itself yeah. and you got a customer at break even. And any time you can get a new customer at break even prices, you should keep on what you're doing. Because, as we know, they're the most expensive ones to get in the door in the first place. So I would think, you know, do a little bit of work on your USP. Next time when you do one of these, you know, you can incorporate some of the things that you've learned from that yeah, in there. Yeah, I will. Now, Tim, I'm going to be doing some work with Tim here next week, and we're going to be crafting a USP for him as well. And Paul, you've got your seminar company that you're, you're starting up and working on. And I think you can find some pretty good ideas in there too. And this type of advertising, by the way, works great in seminar style. This really works in anything. You know, and, and not to repeat too much from last week, but not too many of you were actually here last month. But one of the worst things that you can do is either be boring with your advertising or uh, you know to copy and, and repeat lousy stuff, and I think you're off to a real good start with that. Well, back back to unique selling propositions. Does anybody have any ideas on where they might start? And if you don't, that's okay. That's what this book here is for. Is when you get home and read it over and spark some creative ideas for you. Well, I'm going to start. I'm going to look over this and start. I'm going to start with. I have a lot of good points in this, so I'm going to kind of add all those together to my USB then. Um, you know, I know I I understand that people can go online in two hours and become a mold remediator online, and that and that's you know well they really don't know anything about it. You right. Know, the certifications I have, once it beca the state becomes licensed, I'll, I'll be grandfathered in. All those people will be kicked out. So I know I have a there's a lot of stuff that I can put in there that you know that's what I want people to understand. You know, there's 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 like insurance. Most people don't have mold insurance and, and that's real important because if you get sued liability insurance doesn't cover you, you right. mold insurance is very expensive and so you have to have that and people don't understand that so I'm going to try to incorporate all that stuff so, somebody, so people understand the value of it that sounds real good. Anytime you can get that idea across is good. And, and the more information that we can give our prospective, our, our prospective clients the better. Is nobody wants to buy anything or do business with somebody based on a very small and limited amount of information. Anytime you're looking to make a big purchase, you want as much information as you can. Because people have a natural fear of doing business with new companies. It's just the way it is. And so anything that we can do, be it through your USP, be it through testimonials, be it through free reports or free offers, in order to ease this fear that people have and make them comfortable is good. Well, if nobody has any other questions regarding USPs, I'm going to turn it over to Mike. Oh, I do have a quick question. Do you get, uh, are you getting Dan Kennedy's newsletter? You know, I, I signed up for his thing, and, I, and it said the newsletter was on its way, and I've never seen anything. 
How long ago was that? Oh, um, five weeks ago, maybe. Five weeks ago? Whenever, whenever Bill Glazer's book came out. The yeah, the, time, the, the first uh, right promotions there. for that. So whenever that was. Okay. Well, sometimes those do run yeah. a little bit behind. But I would really recommend uh, becoming a Glazer Kennedy Insider Circle member. Oh, yeah. there's, there's a lot of benefits involved with that. Um, you know, he gives the, the free trial. It's not really a free trial. It's 19 bucks for two months' worth of stuff. He sends you like $600 worth of materials in the mail. I've actually got a couple pictures of it here. Get this big, uh, get this big pile of stuff, which is all really good marketing and business building information, and, and it's cheap. So if you haven't heard anything from them by the time we have a meeting again let me know okay. and I can give them a call personally and, and just find out for you what's going on since you're going to be involved with this chapter here yes. and uh, I, I talk to the guys there every week we talk to Howard or Dan or Bill and I, I can find out why it's not uh, not here yet and get you signed up again if necessary and you know in, in being a GKIC member also It'll get you discounts coming to our meetings here because we do typically charge for these. Um, and the reason for that is honestly there's certain people we don't want coming here. Um, if any of you have ever gone to standard networking meetings, you know you run into a lot of people. They may sell MLM. They may sell something else, but they're not really there to learn. They're not really there to contribute to others. They're there to kind of shove their business card in your face and leave. B&I groups. For that, say, for that reason, because I wasn't going to tell my customers to go to an MLM and get buzzed day and night from them. There was no way I was going to do it. Because I was asking them, right. why, why won't you refer me? And I, I, I just told, I told them, I said, well, you know, I can't. I, mean, you're gonna, I know how you guys are, because I used to do that stuff. I called <laughs> right. that person 50 times, so they... You know, basically right. said they were going to kill me or... Or come to the meeting, <laughs> right? That, that's one of the things that, you know, I didn't like, frankly. You know, I'm not trying to talk bad about b and I. I know it does work good for some folks. For me and for Mike and our business, you know, it really wasn't a fit either. We went to a few meetings and I was just, you know, you want me to pay 500 bucks a year yeah. and you, you got to recruit people and it's just, it didn't seem to be a whole lot of value. Aside from the fact nobody really seemed to be doing what... B and I was about, which is using each other's services and referring. Perhaps it was just the group I was involved in. But we're looking to keep that kind of thing out of here. You know, it's not a problem on a night like tonight when we've just got a really small little group that we can get and talk with. But, you know, we, we've all seen it. So we charge a bit of money. We charge 39 bucks for, for people. But if you're a GKIC member, that gets whacked in half. If you bring a friend with you, another 10 bucks gets taken off of that. But you know, we try to provide a value here. You know, we're, we give stuff you can take home. We're here on Thursdays all day long. We make ourselves available to any of our group members that want to come in and talk to us. If you've got an ad piece that you want to come in, and we're not going to charge it. You know, Mike and I, for our consultations, our two-day consultations run a minimum of $5,000. And we'll give you the same stuff. We will talk to you and spend time with you on Thursdays just for being a part of this group and just for coming in. So, and of course, we'll feed you a little bit too. We really just opportunities. It's the one day a month where we really open our doors and let you cover it off. And I'm figuring, other than, than Tim and David, um, this, this group was formerly run by somebody else. We have taken it over, uh, and it was a lot more real estate oriented. So, a lot of those people that were coming to those meetings probably aren't going to come to ours because I'm not a real estate expert. Mike's not a real estate expert. Terry Bryan who ran these groups before, he's a big time real estate expert. So it was kind of centered and focused around that. But if you don't know, Mike and I own Colorado's only direct response marketing agency. Now we're not talking about direct mail. Yeah. You know, the, 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 that's, a, that's a medium of advertising. We're talking about direct response, which is a technique of advertising. So there's nobody else here doing what we do, and we're here for small businesses and for entrepreneurs specifically. So when we have these meetings and these groups, that's what we're looking to deliver to people. And plus, we like folks to be able to mingle together and to bounce ideas off of. If you've got something that's working real good, you know, if you run this ad and you come back next month and you're excited and it made you, you know, 
200 to 1 on your money, and then you can tell Tim about it, and you can tell Paul or Jeff or George or David, and maybe there's something in there that they can use in their particular business, some idea that's transferable, and then we can all together grow and make our businesses better. So that's really what we're looking to do here. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we're going to charge a little bit of money except for your, your first time to come here. But if you get Dan's newsletter, it's cheaper. I've got some sign-up forms. If Paul, if you're interested in something like that, you know, it's, it's 19 bucks. And frankly, I mean, if you get that big pile of stuff and you get the newsletter and the CDs for two months and you think it wasn't worth it, I, th I think Dan charges 49 bucks a month. You can just cancel it. You can come back and see me. I'll refund your $20. I mean, really, it's, it's good stuff. It's one of the few things I get in the mail that I actually, as soon as it comes, try to stop what I'm doing, yeah. open it up, and check it out. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Mike, and he's going to talk about some personality in marketing and how you can incorporate your own unique traits into what you're doing, kind of like we were discussing earlier. This helps people, you know, not to steal any of Mike's thunder, but... We all like to do friend, business with friends and family if we can. And so by incorporating some personality into what you're doing, you can create a better relationship with not just your prospects, but your customers as well. Very true, very true. Let me give you that there. Thank you. And like I said, just one other thing. If any of you want to talk afterwards, feel free. Uh, we'll be here as late as necessary. So. Okay. Well, today I will be discussing personality and marketing. Now, this picture right here we've got of Dan. It's a very famous picture. And that's Mark Where he shifted to, I'm sure those of you that are familiar with his um, herding business, he shifted to Mark Hurdle's business. And he started with Mark Hurdle's business. And then he went to Mark Hurdle's business. And then he went to Mark This picture marks his first shift to that type of advertising. And he started the campaign by sending out cards that said Rancher. And then he asked people, why am I sending you this card? And it was, it, you know, we had to figure out why is Dan sending me a business card that's an image branded business card. And it was really to that. The other image we have up here is me. That's me with my afro out. That picture was taken maybe two years ago. I haven't cut my hair in seven years. Um, I include that picture up there because that's actually my Twitter profile pic. And I go under the term afro marketing. A lot of uh, personality tied into all that. I get a lot of laughs, I get a lot of comments, cool afro. Um, I don't tend to wear my four button very often with it, but I think that's kind of what makes the picture so good. But anyways, moving on, prospects do not buy how good you are at what you do, they buy how good you are at who you are. And you know, talking more about what Jared said earlier, that's really what this is about. It's about building a relationship with your clients such that they consider you to be a friend or family. Now let's just keep that in our minds as we move on through this. So what are your priorities when you communicate with your customers? It should be business longevity. Number one, how long are you in business for? What are you in business for? I mean, if you think about it, me, I want to make money. I want to make more money faster, easier, over a long period of time. And that's really what I'm looking for out of my business. Not to mention the certain satisfaction I get out of it. But, I mean, that's really what we're about here, is making money easier, longer, and faster. We also need to maintain customers for life. As Jared mentioned before, the first, uh, your first time customer is going to be your most expensive customer. So it means, you know, you're going to spend more to get them, you're going to have to overcome their predisposition not to buy, and you're going to have to work your way basically from unwelcome guest or unwelcome pest to welcome guest. And that's the situation you're going to find yourself in. So we're looking at building customers for life here. And that's why we need personality in our marketing. So let me just ask you, see if you know who these characters are that I'm talking about. Parents were killed in a mugging as a child. He grows up to be a vigilante of the night. Anybody know? Batman. Batman. That's right. Started in 1939. Ten cents. 69 years later... The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight brought in over a half a billion dollars in revenue. 69 years later. Got another character for you. 
shake and not stirred. Walter PPK, License to Kill. We all know this one. James Bond, my favorite, Sean Connery. Love this That's guy. That's the real James Bond. Yeah, and the only one as far as I'm concerned. Although it is interesting to note, though, that many followed after him. You also see they all pretty much follow that basic picture, the held up gun, stern look, tuxedo, all the way until we get to right here with Daniel Craig. This is interesting. Daniel Craig has upset the fan base of James Bond. Uh, he no longer partakes of martinis, from what I understand. I didn't watch his films, even though I'm a big Bond fan. Uh, he's blonde haired instead of the traditional dark haired. So he's caused a lot of problems for this uh, franchise and the fact that they've done 22 films over 46 years and now they're starting to mess, you know, reinvent the wheel, so to speak. One last character, and this one may be a little harder for people, I don't know, depends on the entrepreneurial quotient in the room, arrives on Andrew Carnegie's doorstep on a cold rainy night and he's forced to make a very difficult decision in 30 seconds. Anyone know? <laughs> yeah, well, that's all right. Close. Napoleon Hill. That's it, Napoleon Hill. Think and Grow Rich, 1937. Uh, for those of you in the room that haven't read this book, you need to just go out, go to Barnes & Noble, and buy it. I read it once every year at least. Now, the interesting thing about this guy is that 72 years later, you can still buy him. You can buy Think and Grow Rich at Barnes & Noble. You can buy the calendar. You can buy the audio books, other books by Napoleon Hill. 72 years later. Just out of curiosity, has everybody in the room read that book? I, ha I have it on my iPhone. Does anybody not read it? Oh, well. Tim, I've got a copy of that book. I'll give you an MSD one. My I actually have it. Oh. <laughs> it's, oh, it's, it's hard to find the time, but his 17 principles in there, mm -hmm. definitely no. very good stuff. No doubt about it. And that's like, so there's only maybe a handful of books that I read every year. That's definitely one of them. Yes. And I've read almost all of the Point Hills works. They're very, very good. Okay, so the question is then, what do two fictional characters and a non-fiction character have in common? What traits do they share? How do they get that longevity? Well, that's what I'm here to discuss with you today. The nuts and bolts of good personality-driven marketing. Now the first one, character. That's pretty simple. You get to play the character in your story. You get to be the hero, the, the guru, the legend, however you want to play it. It's yours. Run with it. The only no, symbol. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about that, especially from the talk we had earlier. But the only sin you don't want to commit is being boring. We can't be boring. Otherwise, you take it, run with it, have fun. Proprietary language. Um, this is an interesting one because people, they like to be a part of a group. They don't like to be an outsider. Now, if you include proprietary language in your marketing, it allows them to become part of that group as they learn the language and join it. In addition, well, I would just like to point out, and I think uh, particularly Tim and David will get a kick out of this, just breaks four-wheel friction reline. <laughs> love that. I love that. It's, it's just a brake job. <laughs> I mean, it's just the brake job. But no, to them it's a four-wheel friction reline. And simply by renaming it that, they are able to differentiate themselves from everybody doing brake jobs. So simply you can put yourself in a different category than your competition by simply using different language. Third one, stories. We were just talking about that, the story uh, about what your wife went through. Yes. Combined with that picture, there's a lot of personality, a lot of good stuff you can do there, really. And especially with your story, because these stories should enhance your image, they should enhance the character um, and build that character up. And for you, I mean, it's, you know, it's a done deal. Those things go hand in hand, yeah. the mold in, in your business. So, and people are conditioned to love stories. Ever since we've been children, we're told stories. Ever since you know, the primordial age we were cavemen, we still gathered around the fire and told each other stories. And they're just as powerful today as they were back then. Miracles. No character would be complete without miracles. Uh, of course, one of the most famous, Jesus walking on water. Uh, also, in the case of superheroes, we have Daredevil, a blind superhero. 
you want to use miracles throughout your business, and you can be known for miracles for all different types of things, like uh, returns on investment. For instance, we've had marketing campaigns return 1,000, 2,000 percent ROI, and then so you take that and you can turn that into a miracle. Other types can be personal transformation, going through divorce, uh, alcoholism, any of these things that destroy people that you survive. Those are excellent miracles. And these miracles should reinforce, once again, the character. Dogma. Coming back to Napoleon Hill, all of these characters employ some type of dogma. Napoleon Hill used the 17 principles of success. And then, for instance, we use in our coaching program the seven laws of direct results. Uh, Stephen Covey's seven habits of highly effective people. Ten commandments. The list goes on and on. So you want to instill dogma inside of your marketing pieces and once again tying that back into your character. Testimonials. You really just can't use enough of these in your marketing. Um, if you're not already collecting testimonials or you have questions about them, feel free to talk to us. Uh, we do a lot of work in that area and we'd be happy to point you in the right direction on getting some video testimonials, audio, uh, anything in that area. We do systems related to that. Uh, testimonials should be on everything, your business cards, promotional materials, hanging in your office. I mean, you just can't wait to testimony. So what's in it for me? I mean, obviously what I'm telling you sounds like it's a bit of work creating a whole story. You know, but it's really not that hard really, for you. Well, it reduces new customer acquisition costs because they stay with you longer. As we mentioned, the first customer is your most expensive customer. So by building in personality, they want to stay longer because they like you. you your promotional materials become like a, uh, a serial, like a comic book, in which they look forward to receiving it each month or each week, or however frequent your communication might be. In addition to that, this also has the effect of desensitizing them to your marketing message, meaning that they will no longer view it so much as a marketing message, but something that they look forward to receiving every month. And it often works the same way with newsletter systems as well. Delivering what your customers want. Coming back to things, they want stories, they want to be entertained, they want to laugh, they want funny pictures, they don't want to be sold. So if we get out of that category of being a salesman and get into, I don't want to say entertainment, but by making your pieces more entertaining, people will look forward to them, we'll get a higher response. Oh, they look at Joe's. Your ad isn't necessarily entertaining, but it has entertaining elements in it. It's fun to read that ad. You've got a, well, in its context, you've got a fun picture there. The, the ad itself looks appealing and interesting and it appears to have some sort of story behind what you're doing. Definitely, definitely. You have to maintain your herd. Your personality helps you do that. Once again, coming right back to that picture of Dan Kennedy in the beginning. If you don't put a fence around your herd, maintain it through communication, you will have your herd disappear. They'll slowly be picked off by some other marketer that is communicating frequently with them and using personality. If you're interesting and memorable, your customers will stay with you for life. Uh, last month, we discussed referrals in business and how just doing a good job isn't enough. It won't keep them coming back to you. And it's the exact same thing with this. Uh, doing a good job is not going to keep customers with you for life. It may keep them with you for two, three years, maybe five, but not for life. Not 60, not 70, not 80. So we have to infuse personality in our marketing to ensure lifelong customers. So who's using this stuff? Well, Matt Fury, platinum member, Dan Kennedy, uh, fitness guru, Ron Ipack. Uh, you might be familiar with Ron, Tim, David, perhaps, yeah. Captain Car Count outfit there. Mm -hmm. Automotive marketing or automotive repair. Your humble guru right here, marketing superhero, Bill Glazer. I love that picture. Once again, uh, well, obviously, Glazer Kennedy inside our circle. Yannick Silver, taking off of Austin Powers. He's now on Underground Online Seminar 5, I believe. 
And that should be, once again, a point to the serial nature of this type of marketing. You can keep going. And the first two, the first one I believe he used Mission Impossible. And then he went on to a couple of the Austin Powers. I really don't know where he's at now. He just turns those things out. But once again, the serial nature of what we're doing here allows you to do that. And then honestly, though, all of this is just kind of an excuse to bring up this picture right here. Dan Kennedy, Bill Glazer, and Yannick Silver in drag. <laughs> Now the question that comes up here is, can you overdo this? I don't know, that's pretty off the top. And I love that picture. I got that uh, years ago and I've been holding on to it ever since. It just, it just had me laughing so much, I, I'm almost tempted to hang it up in the office. So it's clear that, that uh, marketers are using this type of approach throughout their businesses. So what are the seven building blocks for personality-driven marketing? And if you follow these tips, you'll be able to construct your own much easier, your own character, your own personality, than reinventing the wheel and starting from scratch. So you've got to write for your customer. And by that, I mean you need to have, Stephen King calls it his constant reader. And he has a picture of these people that read his books all the time, of which I'm a huge fan. Uh, and basically he pictures them sitting in front of them, the characteristics they have, what are their interests, what are their concerns, their fears, what wakes, up, you know, what wakes them up in the middle of the night, what's the first thing they think of when they go to sleep at night. So you've got to be writing for your ideal customer. Backstory equals context. You've got to tell your backstory and you've got to tell it over and over and over again because people forget. And without backstory to your characters, there is no context. So if you imagine Superman, if we didn't know that he was from another planet, then you'd have to sit there and wonder, why is this guy flying around in tights? What is going on? So without your background story, you have no context. And you have to tell your story over and over again. Always keep selling. Even though we're having fun with this, you've got to keep selling. Selling your ideas, selling your product, Selling your philosophy, selling your dogma, selling all the different aspects that create your character. And if I might interject real quick as well, another sure. benefit of doing things like this is it allows you to give your sales messages out to people without it looking so much like a sales message. Because if you just keep sending people, buy, 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 buy from me, it's going to wind up going in the trash and they're not going to care about you. But if you can craft your your sales around your character and your personality, you can disguise it a bit more. That's like Mike mentioned earlier, newsletters are great vehicles for mm -hmm. doing that type of thing. Yeah, definitely. And just a quick note on that sales aspect. When I first got on Twitter, I've been on Twitter for about, oh, I don't know, roughly six to eight months, got about 2,500 followers. I didn't tweet anything, I didn't send any offers, I didn't do anything business related, I only provided good content. And now, that I've built a relationship with these people and I'm actually sending out sales messages, they're much more receptive to that than people that hop on Twitter and then just sell, sell, sell. Yeah, Mike and I, we've had great success on Twitter. And is anybody in here, I know Paul's on Twitter, or any of you guys on Twitter at all, Tim is. Well, one of the things a lot of people get on Twitter and they try to sell. They think you can just send people a tweet with a link and they're going to buy from you. But the facts are, Mike and I have never tried to sell anybody anything on Twitter. And right now, in the city of Colorado Springs, as far as followers go, I'm ranked third, and he's ranked fourth. And we've got a group between the two of us, of close to 5,000 people, that are paying attention to what we're saying, and they're getting value out of what we're doing. They don't look mm -hmm. at us as some sort of salesman that are trying to get money out of their pocket. They look at us like marketing experts that are trying to help out without asking for anything. So like when it comes time for me to send a tweet out about, hey, if you're in Colorado Springs and you'd like to come to my meeting, please come along, it's received a lot differently than if I was constantly sending out something that said, come buy my latest product or, or click here to get my $20 market. Exactly, exactly. So, write like you talk. When we write our copy, I'm not afraid to use gunnas, ain'ts, crap, any of that. You got to talk how other people talk, speak what they want to hear. 
So you write like you talk. And if you start including all these big words in there, it's just going to turn people off. And unfortunately nowadays, I hate to say it, there's not a lot of people out there reading books. I mean, let's just face it, most people, um, I think the average is less than three a year. So we're in a bad situation when it comes to that. But we can... A way to avoid that, though, is you can go ahead and take your pieces and have them read by your children, have them read by a 10-year-old. Because honestly, that's about where the reading level we're looking at here. Yeah, if you can take a, like I've, I've got an eight-year-old daughter, and sometimes I have her read the sales copy that I write. And for the most part, if it's something big that she can't understand, I take it out. Mm -hmm. And this, by the way, someone telling you to write like you talk is coming from a man who got a degree in English. Oh, yeah, that's very good to point out that uh, my bachelor's degree is in English literature. And basically, I had to unlearn grammar in order to relearn copywriting when I got out of school. So, your grammar teacher should hate your copy. <laughs> yes, and, and, and this also relates to our talk about the USP earlier. You do not need, even though I was, I was making fun of H&R Blocks, you've got people, in reality, you do not need to be grammatically correct. You don't have to use big words. It doesn't have to be a proper sentence. That's just right like you talk. That's how people are. Okay. So, likability. We can't play the villains in our own story. It just doesn't work. So we need to make sure and infuse likable characteristics inside of all of this. And uh, if you're not a very likable person, well, you should be in your marketing. So but I don't think we have any problems with that. In, in, 